Now that we have some experience dealing with complex numbers, let's now introduce Euler's formula. As we will see in this course, it will be very convenient to express functions in polar coordinates and relate trigonometric functions with exponentials. Euler's formula is a way to relate a complex number written using trigonometric functions with a complex exponential. It is defined as e raised to the power of i times theta being equal to the cosine of theta plus i sine theta. Let's take a step back and first relate our complex number z in Cartesian coordinates, meaning x plus i times y, to polar coordinates, represented as a radius r and an angle theta. Looking at the figure on the right, we have our complex number x plus i times y illustrated in Cartesian coordinates by the point x, y. This point can also be defined by the distance from the origin, denoted as r, and the angle theta between the x-axis and the line that joins the origin to the point using a counterclockwise rotation. Referring to the figure, we can see that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta, and y is equal to r times the sine of theta. So, substituting that into our Cartesian expression for a complex number, we get z is equal to r cosine theta plus i times r sine theta. If we distribute out the r, we can now relate this expression to the complex exponential, e raised to the power of i times theta, as defined by Euler's formula. This means that r times the cosine of theta plus i sine theta is equal to r times e raised to the power of i times theta. Again, this expression will prove to be extremely useful as we move through the course. Now that we've defined Euler's formula, we're now going to do an example where we convert a complex number in Cartesian coordinates into the form of a complex exponential. And so in this example, we have a complex number written in Cartesian coordinates, minus 1, minus 2i. What we're going to do is re-express it in the form of a complex exponential, re raised to the power of i theta. First, let's draw a picture to see what this is actually trying to do, or what this actually looks like. So if I draw my Cartesian coordinates, I have my 2D plot, and I have a couple of spots that I'm just going to define where 1 and 2 are. And in this case, I'm going to express, or I'm going to show where my complex number minus 1, minus 2 is. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go minus 1 along the x-axis, and I'm going to go minus 2 along the y-axis. And so my point is this point down here this is minus 1 minus 2 where I have my imaginary part of my complex number which is along the y-axis and I have the real part of my complex number along the x-axis. And so if I want to define where r and theta are I would say well r is just the distance between this point and the origin and theta is an angle that I'm going to draw starting from the x-axis and have it spin all the way around to where my r line is. And so that's what theta is. And so our strategy then will be that we will use the x and the y component to calculate r since we have a right triangle. And we're also going to use trigonometric functions. We'll use the tan function to calculate theta. Where in this case what we'll do is we're going to calculate the small angle inside of here, which I'll denote as alpha for the time being. And then we'll simply say that theta is then going to be equal to 180 degrees plus alpha. So following through with that strategy, we have r is equal to x squared plus y squared. And we have to make sure we square root the whole thing. And if I substitute in for x and y, what I get is minus 1 squared plus minus 2 squared, all square rooted. r is equal to 1 plus 4. And finally, that means then that 1 plus 4 is 5, so r is equal to the square root of 5. And if you recall, we also defined this quantity where we had the magnitude of z, which is equal to the square root of z times its complex conjugate. And what we saw, or what this number defines, is the distance between itself and the origin. This is the magnitude of z. But you notice that this length is the exact same length as r. And so what we can do then is we can relate this to the radius as well. And so we can also say r is equal to 
Well, z is our complex number, minus 1 minus 2i. Multiply that by its complex conjugate, minus 1 plus 2i, where again the complex conjugate is simply found by taking all the terms that have i in them and flipping their sign, and so in this case I have a minus i, and I flip it to a plus i. I, of course, have to take the square root of this term. When I FOIL out these two numbers, I get 1 minus 2i plus 2i minus 4i squared, all square rooted. And so right now I can then cross off the minus 2i and the plus 2i because they cancel each other out. What I'm left with is 1 minus 4, and I'll substitute in for my i squared, which is just minus 1, and I'll take the square root of the whole term. And what I have is minus 4 minus 1, multiplied together, so that's plus 4, so 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. And so my final answer here for my radius again is the square root of 5. Now what about theta? So in this case with theta, what we're going to use is a trigonometric um, relationship where we're going to say that the tan of alpha is equal to y over x, meaning we have the tan of some angle is equal to the opposite over adjacent. And that's basically defined by my right triangle that I have drawn up here. And so then to find alpha, we would then say alpha is equal to the inverse tan of y over x. And I'm simply then just going to substitute in these x and y values, which is minus 1 and minus 2. So alpha is equal to the tan or the inverse tan of minus 2 over minus 1, which means that my alpha is equal to 63.4 degrees. The thing about complex exponentials, however, is that we can't typically use degrees for theta when expressing complex numbers using this exponential notation. Instead, what we need to do is actually express these numbers in pi radians. And so, in fact, if we change our calculator settings to output a, a value in pi radians, an angle in pi radians, what we would get is 1.11 radians. And so all that does is just it slightly changes our strategy. So instead of taking that number and adding 180 degrees to it, in this case, we're just going to add pi to it. Because if you recall, in the pi radians um, way of describing angles, we still say that along the x-axis, our pi radians is equal to 0. If we spin 90 degrees, then that gives us a pi radians of pi over 2. If we continue over and we spin 180 degrees, and that gives us a pi radians of pi. And if we keep going around, we eventually get back to our starting point, and we have, we've spun 360 degrees, which is equal to 2 pi. And typically, the conversion between degrees and pi radians would be, if we have some number in degrees, we would then multiply it by pi over 180 degrees, and that's what then I would put a value in radians. So that's the simple conversion between the two numbers. But in this case, again, so that our angle will play nicely with our complex exponential term, we need to write this number in pi radians. But again, all that means then is that instead of it being 63.4, it's now 1.11, and to that we're going to add pi. So that means in this case, if we want to get our theta, then we're simply just going to say, Theta is equal to 1.11 plus pi, which is equal to 4.25. What that means for our final answer then, which again, where our original purpose was to express a complex number minus 1 minus 2i in terms of a complex exponential, and in this case what we've determined that exponential to be is the square root of 5 times e raised to the power of 4.25 times i. Here is a summary of the material covered in this lecture. A complex number z is equal to x plus i times y, where i is equal to the square root of negative 1. The complex conjugate of a complex number takes all instances of i and replaces it with negative i. When a complex number is multiplied by its conjugate, meaning z times z star, the result is a real number. The square root of that number is the magnitude of z. And finally, Euler's formula, defined as e raised to the power of i times theta being equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta, relates a complex number expressed using trigonometric functions with an exponential function.